We're glad that you're with us this morning. We're thankful for your attendance. We have a good crowd. Have a good number with us today. Um, but I do hate interrupting this fellowship. It's so good to hearing it. And But you know what? It's time for us to commune with God, isn't it? Fellowship with Him. There are several things we need to, uh, to be reminded of. If you would, please. In, in your bulletin, there's the sick list. And the sick list... I'm looking at a couple new names on there. A couple of names is probably going to be removed, too. But uh, we need to keep that list on us. If you look at that list, you're going to find out that that uh, there's a new one on there, Kelsey Gray. Kelsey Gray, it says right here that she is June Boone's granddaughter. She has COVID. That's not the problem. She's also eight months pregnant. So we need to keep her definitely in our prayers and the baby, and the doctors that are ministering to them. That is a serious situation right there. So we need to keep Kelsey Gray in our prayers, particularly. Dean, Sh uh, Dean Shunover, one we've been praying for for so long, he passed away last night, uh, this morning. He passed away this morning. They had prearranged funeral services for him. Um, He's Deborah's brother, right? Uh, he uh, prearranged. Is it still on for the tomorrow? As far as he knows, it's still on for tomorrow. Uh, the funeral um, at Van Buren, Arkansas, in Missouri. I didn't think you were going to get your town in there. Um, let's see. Um, so Dean Schoonover passed. Uh, also, we had a call for about... Glenn Crossland. Glenn, Glenn Crossland is, is Ruth's brother. He passed away with COVID because of a heart attack at the same time. Double whammy there, too. And the sad thing is, his wife is in home bed with COVID. So we need to remember that family as well. So they're going kind of a double and triple family as well. Um, let's see, Missy Lewis has been asked, please have prayers for Missy because, you know, they said she's really having some, some physical problems now with some, with some health issues. So remember Missy as you pray as well. And you know what? It wouldn't hurt for if you just, if you just got a directory and just pray for every one of us. That way you'll get us, right? Okay, if you would, please, let's, let's bow together. Ask the Lord to bless us. We're thankful, Father, that you loved us and provided a way for us through this life. We know that this life is, is, is physical, and being physical, we're going to get sick, and we're going to die, and we're going to have problems. We're going to have pain in this life. But when we look at the life to come, we're so thankful that, the, that Jesus has provided a place for us. There's no more pain, no more anger, no more anguish. All is going to be good and blessed. But you heard our names. We heard the names we talked about, the Shunovers and, and the Crosslands and the, and, and the Lewises as they are struggling. And we pray, Father, that you will be with, with Kelsey Gray. We know, Father, that this is a serious situation because of the, of the pregnancy that she's also going through. And we pray, Father, that, that all of these that's on our list, your your hear them and help them and strengthen them and, and get them through this difficult time in their life. But for those who are spiritually sick, Father, we even pray even longer and harder that, Father, this physical consequences now doesn't compare with the spiritual consequences of not being with you for an eternity. Be with those who are yet to be part of your kingdom. Bless us and encourage us and help us, Father, to always Strive to put you first in our lives. Bless us now. Be with us as we go through the service. May all things be according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. What a blessing we have to be able to be here today. We hear so many sick and and ailing and so many on our list 
prayer list that are not able to be here. And we are. <laughs> I want to thank you uh, visitors for coming our way and, and spending time with us. Uh, I know I've, I've met a few this morning, but if you would, just raise your hand if you're visiting today. Look around, folks. That's a, that's a lot of good, good people right there to come spend time with us today. Let's, uh, let's make them welcome. One bit of uh, business right off the bat. We're millennials. Some of us are. Not really, but uh, we all carry these things. And if we would, just take a moment and quieten yours for the next hour or two. They'd be grateful, and uh, we would appreciate that. I know the, the uh, ministers and, and those that are praying it's a distraction whenever those things go off right in the middle. So, and to me too, I, I focus, my, I lose my focus. Uh, there are several happenings coming up uh, today at 4.30. The elders have called for a uh, men meeting and we uh, hopefully that we'll get most of the men there this afternoon for, for this meeting. Uh, also, Got coming up is the holiday party, uh, December 11th. There's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board in the back. If you can sign that, that'd be grateful. Uh, to give give us an idea of how many meals to prepare. And then um, I think that's that's about all we got going there. Um, Baptisms. We had four baptisms this last week. I'd like to uh, ask you to welcome in Austin Diker, Joe Hardy, uh, Craig King, and Jake, Jacob Short. They're all uh, inmates at the local uh, jail. And we have uh, three more that uh, we are expecting to baptize this afternoon. So. Please be praying for these guys. If you have time, um, take a card and make a note to these these guys and, and encourage them. Uh, we are we are the church, and we're to be reaching out, especially to those guys that are struggling so hard right now in their lifetime to try to turn themselves around. It's a be a big blessing for them. Um, also, a bit of um, lady, well, uh, a bit of business here. Ladies' Bible class, please sign the blank cards in the foyer. These will be, uh, this will allow them to be mailed uh, more timely and hopefully avoid some postal uh, returns. The last call on, on Ron's uh, turkey cook. He's going to be smoking turkey, hams, and chickens if you'd like, and uh, get a hold of Ron. Uh, be this, he'll be smoking Tuesday. He may like for you to bring it uh, Monday night, but talk to him. He'll he'll tell you when and how to take care of that. I think that's all. Oh, I got uh, one card. Now this may be a redundant. We found it in a pew up here. And, and so I'm going to read it, and it may be redundant, but it's still a good card. Uh, to my church family, I'm truly thankful for all the prayers and calls, cards and cards during my health struggles. Uh, through the power of prayer, uh, my kidney function is back up, and I uh, won't need the dialysis at this time. God is truly a great, God is truly great. Christian love, Patsy. And with that, uh, um, in the book of John, chapter 15, I'd like to read, As the Father hath loved me, so I have loved you. Continue in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. 
These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy might be full. These, this is my command that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man may lay down his life for his friends. And ye are my friends if ye do whatever I command you. Let us enter, enter into our worship period. Our God, Father in heaven, we come before you in great appreciation of that love that you have shown to us. Father, we worship you in this hour. We raise you up. We lift you up. We hold you up. We pray, Father, that as we do so, that, that you would see the love, joy and the love that we have in our hearts, that you would see the joy and love that we have with one another. We pray, Father, that you'd be with those of our congregation who are not able to be here, whether it be uh, from sickness or spiritual sickness. We pray, Father, that we can strengthen and encourage them through whatever trial that they may be faced. Father, we love you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our song this morning will be How Great Thou Art, song number 76. Please sing out, let your brothers and sisters know that you're singing in the spirit. <clears throat> oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds Sing sweetly in the trees When I look down From lofty mountain grandeur And hear the brook And feel the gentle breeze Then sings my soul <clears throat> How great thou art how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing, Send him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come, with shout of acclamation, 
and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Songs will be 99, 100, and 101. Holy Presence Medley. <coughs> <coughs> Great singing. I appreciate it ever so much. As we enter this week of Thanksgiving, from our secular perspective, it becomes a religious expect perspective as well, a Christian perspective. And we have so many things to be thankful for, and that great God we just sang of them is, is the first one. In his presence. <coughs> Excuse me. In his presence there is come. In his presence there is peace when we seek the father's heart we will find such blessed assurance in the presence of the lord in his presence there is comfort in his presence there is peace when we seek the father's heart we will find such blessed assurance in the presence of the Lord. Cover me, Lord, with your presence. This is holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. For is present and where he is is holy this is holy ground we're standing on holy ground for the lord is present and where he is is holy you are holy God, a perfect and holy God. We will come before you with hearts made clean by Jesus' blood. You are holy God, a perfect and holy God. We will come before you with hearts made clean by Jesus' blood. 101 there. There it is. <clears throat> we are standing on holy ground and 
And I know that there are angels all around. Let us pray. Jesus, now we are standing in his presence on holy ground. We are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around. Let us pray. We are standing in his presence. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. 313, the old rugged cross. We'll sing this song before we partake of the Lord's Supper. <coughs> Verses 1, 2, and 4, please. On a hill far away Stood an old rugged cross The emblem of suffering and shame And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross so despised by the world as a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it some day for a crown to the old rugged cross I will ever be true its shame and reproach gladly bear then you call me someday to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share. 
sanctified. We have pledged our lives to the Lord. And as we commune with him around this table at this time, a very sacred time, we are reminded that we are standing on holy ground. If you have your communion supplies, if you would get those ready, please. Does anybody need any communion supplies? Everybody got communion supplies? I'm not seeing any hands, so. I'd like to read few words from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Corinthian brethren. The Lord's instituted this supper. It's not instituted by man. God himself instituted this supper that you're about to partake of. And then later on we see the Apostle Paul referring to that here in this 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians. He said, For I beseech you from the Lord that which I that I that, let me start again. For I received from the Lord that which I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Brethren, we who are members of the Lord's body, remember this and remember what the Lord did for us. And this indeed is holy God sacred time for us, his servants. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, as we partake of this communion, Lord, we, we pray for your blessing on this bread which represents Christ's flesh that was given for our sins on the cross. Lord, we pray that we take of it in a worthy manner. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Our more gracious and loving Father, we thank you for this one more opportunity you gave us to celebrate the memorial that your son established more than 2,000 years ago. Father, we pray that you help us to take our hearts and minds back in time and remember the awful day that your son was hanging at the cross. And this cup we are about to partake to present the blood each here and every hell. Help us to do this in the manner pleasing your sight. Yes, I pray to you, precious Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As a separate act of worship, we uh, have the opportunity to give back as we've been prospered, as we have purpose in our heart, as we have uh, love in our heart back to God. Let us pray. To God and Father, especially thank you for this opportunity we have to share among the means back to you and show forth our love and help us always to, to use your 
support giving to, to support the church, to to evangelize the world, and and to to, to show our love for you. Christ, we pray. Four hundred fifty four for those using the songbook, four hundred fifty four, Rock of Ages. Sing this song before we go to God in prayer. Rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy riven side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Cleanse me from its guilt and power, not the labor of my hands can fulfill the law's demands. Could my zeal no respite know, could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save, and thou alone. Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cleave. Naked come to thee for dress. Helpless look to thee for grace. Vile I to the fountain fly. Wash me, Savior, or I die. Will you bow with me? Our most kind, loving Heavenly Father, we are indeed thankful that we have the opportunity to come together today and to worship you. Dear Father, we pray that our worship is acceptable in your sight, that is in spirit and in truth. And dear Father, we uplift our voices to you in songs and in prayer, knowing, Father, that you are listening and that you are near. Help us, Father, to always walk in your path, to be what we should be, to be examples to others. 
Dear Father, help us to lift one another up, for we all have need of your grace and your love and your mercy as you shed forth the blood of your Son upon us. Father, we pray for those who are listed who are sick physically. We ask if it is your will that they would be restored. We ask, Father, for those who are spiritually sick to have some time that they might come to the realization of what they need to do. Give us wisdom, Father, that we might speak your words in such a way to encourage one another, to lift people up, to cause them to want to follow after you. Father, we're thankful for our visitors. We pray, Father, that what we say and do is in such a way that will encourage them and will welcome them properly. And Holy Father, we pray that you'd be with those who were baptized this last week. Bless these four men. Help them in the process of, of becoming good Christians, to turning their life around. Be with those who are in the jail ministry working hard to take your word to these who need to hear it. Among also, Father, the many Bible studies that are going on. We pray a blessing be upon these, upon all who are studying and desiring to know your will and follow after your will. Be with those who are in foreign fields, Father, teaching and preaching today. Give them courage, Father, to do the things that they need to do. Dear Father, we're thankful for our military. We ask that you would bless these men and women who defend our country and try to extend freedoms to others. Dear Father, may they be in the palm of your hand for protection. May you give them courage and strength to do the job that is set before them to do. Be with our police force, highway patrol. Be with those who are working on the ambulance today. Father, we appreciate so much the service of all these things. But Holy Father, help us to have thanksgiving in our heart for all the blessings you bestow down upon us each and every day. For we know that everything that we have that is good has come from you. Dear Father, we pray that you will be with Rick and Kathy. Bless them that they minister to us. Help us to be good listeners and to seek in your word to make sure what is being said is truly there. Dear Father, we pray that you'll bless us all if it is your will. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Brother Paul. Thank you. 1007, America the Beautiful, 1007. As we think of Thanksgiving, we remember this great country that we live in and that is truly a blessing from God. This song is a reminder of that, that truly is a blessing from God. Please stand for the song and we'll have our lesson afterwards. For those marking the songbook, I'll give you this song number afterwards. <coughs> O oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain, America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. O oh, beautiful for pilgrim feet whose stern impact <coughs> <clears throat> Freedom beat across the wilderness, America. 
America, God mend thine every flaw, confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in law. O beautiful, for heroes proved in liberating strife, who more than self their country loved, and mercy more than life. America, America, make God thy gold refine, till all success be nobleness, and every gain divine. O beautiful, for patriot dream that sees beyond the stories, thine hour. <coughs> <coughs> my human tears. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining. Amen. Please be seated. Brother Rick will bring our lesson now, and our invitation of song will be 919. Behold a stranger at the door. We would like to echo what was previously said. Welcome to all our visitors. We appreciate seeing you here today. We've had a good time visiting with some of you and look forward to maybe some more time after we dismiss to be able to do that. We hope that you and pray that you will be back with us to worship again. Tonight we'll be looking at Hebrews chapter 10 and we're going to zero in on one verse and that's verse 24. So if you want to go home and read chapter 10, but especially take notice of verse 24. However, this morning I'd like for you to take your Bibles and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We're going to take a look at what Paul wrote to the church at Corinth, and among many things that he wrote, Paul talked about a very real and important thing to the Christians down through the ages, and that is the reason why we have Thanksgiving. Now, it's not the meal that we're going to be talking about. It's talking about the Thanksgiving to God. And, of course, I like this time of year because people start thinking about thanksgiving, hopefully, to God. Even though history is trying to be rewritten in our nation so that God's written out. When we look at Scripture, the focus of our thanksgiving is a thanksgiving to the Almighty God for what great things He's done and how He has blessed throughout the ages His people that choose to follow Him rightly. I'd like for you to begin with me as we look at this chapter 4 with the words start in verse 1. Therefore, Paul writes, since we have this ministry, as we received mercy, we do not lose heart. And that's something that as we think about this lesson this morning, I want you to really think about. And that is the mercy and how it has affected your life. And as that previous song that Ron led points out, America has been affected by the grace and mercy of God. People in pursuit of that very thing of grace and mercy came to this nation to escape tyranny and to have freedom to worship God as they saw fit. And of course, out of that movement in America, that search for freedom came what we know as the Restoration Movement. 
where men were pleading with others to go back to the Bible, to speak only where the Bible speaks, and to respect the silence of the Scripture. And I am so thankful that we had men in the past who set their heart upon doing nothing but to preach the pure truth of God's Word. And we give thanksgiving for that, don't we? Because all across the nation we have congregations that are working to evangelize, to give people that message that you can go back to the Bible and be like those folks in the first century who simply worshiped God and gave Him the praise and thanksgiving for His grace and for His mercy. We've got a lot of school teachers here and ex-school teachers who have retired. They, they can understand. Teachers working with a class and she says, okay, before we go into lunch, what is the cause of Thanksgiving? Well, as you can see here from the little cartoon balloons, kids think everything, don't they? Finally, one young lady over here figures it out. She has an answer. A big turkey. This Thursday, a lot of folks will gather around a big old turkey. It's been cooked in the oven. Maybe Ron cooked it previously. But they'll gather around a big old turkey and they'll pause for a moment to bow their heads and to give thanks for their blessings, for the food. And hopefully you do that on a regular basis because truly we are blessed with so much in this country in which we live. But there's more to Thanksgiving than just the big old turkey, isn't there? In fact, as you look at the passage of Scripture that we have here, you're going to see that, that God has blessed us so much that it results in Thanksgiving that's a part of our lives every day that we live or should be. Now, if we were to go out and take a survey among young people today and ask them, well, what's the cause of Thanksgiving? A lot of people say the Indians. Because they brought the goods to the, to the pilgrims and they were hungry and they, they showed them how to fish and how to get the grain to grow on the ground and all those sorts of things. And then, then they helped feed them. And so it was the Wampanoag tribe that Thanksgiving centered upon because they helped feed the pilgrims. Well, there's a little bit lost in that history, isn't there? In fact, I ran across this I want to share with you this morning. There is a letter written to a friend in England that actually documents what took place during this time of the pilgrims in 1621 that we attribute to our modern holiday, Thanksgiving. Pilgrim Edward Winslow, who was there, wrote the only record of the celebration that survives. And here's what he wrote. In the fall of 1621, when their labors were rewarded with the bountiful harvest after a year of sickness and scarcity, the pilgrims gave thanks, and look at this, to God. I'm sure they were grateful for whatever the Indians might have contributed to their beneficial benefit. But the essence of their thanksgiving was directed towards God. And even though the Indians joined them, along with 90 men we have record of, their focus was still Almighty God. Now I want you to look, if you look at your Bibles, you can look on the screen, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. We read these words, and since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, Paul says, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. You see the focus going to heaven. You see the focus going to God, but he goes on. Verse 15 is a key verse. For all things are for your sakes. Paul says what we do as those who have God's good news within 
human vessels. All things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. You see what he's saying? What's the essence? What is the cause of thanksgiving? When you look at this passage of Scripture, it is clear it starts with grace. Grace, that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving. This morning I want us to think about this cause. The one that Paul wrote that should cause within us an emergence of thanksgiving because of what God did for us, especially when we understand this word grace. The word that's translated here is a word which means goodwill, loving kindness, favor. But there's a couple elements with this meaning that we must understand. Number one, this in order to count or this to have any value at all that we call grace, it first has to be extended outward. And then secondly, it is a gift that is extended in the sense that it is given, not earned. And so that is very important to understand. For example, you go to work, you work all week, and they, the folks in charge of the money come in, and they hand you a check. They extend to you a check. But it's not an extension of grace. It is what you have earned. They are paying you for what you've earned. But there's an essential element of grace that we must understand that it is unearned and unmerited. It's not what we earn. It's what has been extended in the sense that it is given. I like what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. I thank God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus. How many of you have ever gone a week or two weeks maybe and your check was supposed to be in the mail that you've earned or you didn't get it deposited in your bank like they're all doing direct deposits. What happens then? Well, you want your money, right? And why do you want your money? Because you earned it. They owe it to you. Therefore, you expect it. Grace is that which is not expected. It is that which you have not earned, that which has been extended out of a gift. And what has God done? The grace of God is given. And it came in evidence by Jesus Christ himself. Now here is a beautiful picture of some letter type. And you see this often in, in flea markets and in craft sh stores and things like that. And, and they'll form words that are pretty dramatic words like this one, grace. And I like those things, and so it'd be very easy for me to purchase something like that, put it on my shelf, or maybe on the little fireplace mantle he got, and have it there to look at. But here's the point I want you to see. This actually was formed from type. It was designed to work. It was designed to be a part of that which is printed. It had a function. Grace unextended is nothing more than a good concept an item to be admired like these letters put on a mantle but notice it's a waste of that which is extremely valuable what is of greater value than the actual extension of God's grace nothing we know that don't we but yet grace is something that we can easily take advantage of. I want to remind you of what took place in Matthew 26. It's getting close to the time for Jesus to go on the cross, which we remember in the Lord's Supper. And there was a lady who comes in while the disciples were present. And she took an alabaster jar of very expensive and precious ointment 
And that jar could have easily been put on a shelf, put on a dresser, uh, put somewhere to admire. But she took that and then used that fragrant oil to anoint Jesus' hand. And the disciples were indignant. As you can read here in verse 8. And they say, why this waste? The real waste is when grace is not extended. What Paul is saying to you and I is that grace is extended because of what Jesus did. And as you look at this passage, it's also interesting to think about the fact that the disciples had no say in this. It wasn't their business, was it? Verse 10 says, when Jesus was aware of it, he said to them, Why do you trouble this woman? For she has done a good work for me. A work of grace is not a paycheck, is it? Oftentimes, when people think about grace, they don't think about grace at work. They don't think about the fact that grace is only good when it's put to use, when it's extended. But the reality is that that extension of God's grace, the, even the extension of good grace, results in thanksgiving. Because you see, the more grace is spread, the more cause for thanksgiving. And that's exactly what Paul wrote. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving. We don't often think of grace being like butter spread on a piece of toast, but it is. Grace is only good when it's spread, when it's extended. And Paul's telling them that that's what his work is about. Paul went about it as he proclaimed to Titus in Titus 2, verse 11, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared, notice this, to all men. Christ died on that cross for all men. And as John said, greater love has no man than this, and a man lay down his life for his friends. Who laid down their life to extend the grace of the Almighty God? We know, don't we? It was Christ. Christ died as an extension of the good pleasure and favor of the Almighty God. And that has appeared to all men, Paul says to Titus. And that was the purpose, to let the world benefit from the grace that was spread. Now, how many of y'all like peanut butter? I'm looking at Jack now, not to embarrass him again, but you like peanut butter, Jack? And I know you like pancakes. You like to spread that syrup on pancakes? Yeah. And I think if, if Jack and I got together and he had the time, we could probably spread a lot of peanut butter on bread and hand it out to a lot of people that would be thankful. And while that seems simple, that really illustrates what Paul's saying. Because Jesus Christ gave himself as Paul goes on to write in chapter 2 of Titus, who gave himself for us, verse 14, that he might redeem us from the lawless deed and, and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. What did God do? He wanted to make sure that the message was sent out to all, that there is going to be a place for special people that understand the spread of this grace. That's why we read in Acts 5, verse 14, the believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women. Acts 17, verse 4, and some of them were persuaded, and a great multitude. That's the design that God had for grace, that it would be spread. How many of you have got peanut butter in a jar on your cabinet? We do, don't we, Kathy? How often have I seen that spread on bread not at all because she don't like peanut butter 
I love peanut butter. Now, occasionally, I'll, she'll put some of that in the celery. But do we have any celery in our refrigerator? Do we really? Guess what I'm having for lunch today? What good's peanut butter sitting in a jar? Not much good. But when it's spread, that's good news. And look at here what we read in reference to that which causes thanksgiving being grace of God. Notice what Paul writes. For all things are for your sakes that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Of God. That word abound. Fascinating word because it means to exceed a fixed number or measure. They would have certain things like a certain uh, size bag, and that bag set the measure, like we would say a bushel of wheat. Well, this word refers to having that bushel or that measure and then going way above beyond, way above it. And so what this verse is saying to us, that grace causes thanksgiving to overflow more than our expectation to the glory of God. It's amazing how when grace is spread that God will be glorified in ways we don't even think of, nor ways that we even expect. But it's there and it's real because God's involved. He is at work. And the beauty is that it will abound to his glory. And that word glory is also a very interesting word. It's a word which means to evoke literally a good opinion. That which is based upon the fact that the glory comes from the real, realization of the great value and, and worth, and of course, in this case, of God. Therefore, it's, it means praise and honor. Grace may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory, the praise and honor of an almighty God. And that will happen in ways we don't even think about. But we understand this. Many of you go to a restaurant and you very humbly, you're not there for show, of course, but you humbly stop for the moment to offer God thanks. Why? Because you recognize it's a gift. And that we're blessed to live in this nation, to have access to the bountiful blessings that we have. And that's often said in prayers, isn't it? But who gets the glory? What's it really about? It's saying, God, thank you. It's giving God that thanksgiving because glorifying God is the focus of our Christian walk. I live so that I can serve and work so that God's grace can produce an abundance of glorification for the almighty God. Look at, if you would, at verse 6. This is not on the screen, so look at verse 6, 2 Corinthians. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. Go back to Genesis 1. What did God do? He created the light. Then he created the sun and the moon to shine forth that light. But notice what Paul is saying here. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Do you see that? To give light of the knowledge of the glory of God of God, and look at this, in the face of Jesus Christ. Remember the transfiguration? What was the light like? Remember Moses when he went up on the mount and encountered God? What happened with the light? 
What happens when you and I walk in the light? What happens when we work to extend grace to those who are in need? To give to others. Who's glorified? Jesus said it well, Matthew 5, verse 15, on the Sermon on the Mount, nor do they light a lamp, put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And you notice Jesus didn't stop there, did he? He didn't come to a stop and say, okay, done with that. No, no, no. There's an and. Glorify your Father in heaven. This morning when you leave here, you remember nothing else. Think about the fact you're going out as a light to the world. Jesus living in you. You're going to let your light shine, and what's going to happen? People are going to see Christ in you. But more importantly, it's going to result in God being glorified. Paul wrote to the Philippians in chapter 2, verse 9, and talked about the reality of our confession. What's the confession all about? It's about Jesus. We live with the profession of confession of Jesus as the Christ, the Son of God. So that God will receive the glory. Look what he says in verse 11. That every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's so that God can be praised and honored. Paul was talking about the reality of what grace does for man. And how it will cause thanksgiving. And that's the essence of the lesson this morning. Grace. The focus. Grace that has the power to spread through many because of the power that's in God's Word. Grace that produces that abounding, overflowing thanksgiving, resulting ultimately in the glorification of an almighty God. What's the cause of thanksgiving many, many years ago? Was it just food on the table? Was it just because the Indians helped out the pilgrims? It was God's grace. Those people came with knowledge of God's grace. They were blessed with an extension of God's blessing. In fact, they were here to eat that which God gives. And as we're told in the historical record of letters, they gave thanks to God. That, while significant, is not so significant as the reality of the fact that that lives in us. As Paul writes, we understand grace that produces that thanksgiving. And it's because of what Jesus did that there's an accountability for us today to consider when we consider the great grace of God that gives him the glory because one day all men will give an account, as Clayton pointed out in chapter 20 of Revelation this morning in the class. God will one day hold us accountable for what we do with his grace. What we do with the grace that we have recorded in the book we call the New Testament. With the story of Christ, but that story wasn't just a cross. It was a cross that was empty and a tomb that was empty because the one taken off that cross walked free of that tomb. That's why this morning, by the grace of the Almighty God, we extend this invitation to you. If you're here and you're not yet a Christian, how can you be glorifying God? It really needs to be us who are his children that are the full extension of the glorification. So if you're here and you're not yet a Christian, why not make the right decision? The plan's simple and and most of you know that plan, but if not, we would like to study with you so we can help you understand it better. Because oftentimes people will point out the importance of, of hearing and believing and even repentance and confessing that Jesus is the Christ, but they stop there. 
But notice the steps go on. A person must be baptized in Christ. We know that from Mark 16, verse 15. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And then, of course, from Revelation 2, verse 10, we have the obligation as God's children to live faithfully so that that grace will produce an overflowing glorification for Almighty God. Let me ask this question as we end. Is your life glorifying God? If not, let us help you as we stand and sing. Would you come? Has waited long, is waiting still. You treat no other friend so ill, but will he prove a friend indeed? He will the very At Calvary, O oh, lovely attitude, he stands with melting heart and laid on hands. O oh, matchless kindness and he Matchless kindness to his foes. Admit him for the human breast. Ne'er entertain so kind a guest. No mortal tongue that joys can tell with whom he condescends to dwell. Thank you, Brother Rick. Thank each of you for worshiping with us this morning. I pray that you'll be able to return at 6 p.m. this evening for our worship service. We're going to close with I'll live in glory, 895. I'd like to stay here longer than man's allotted days And watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven ways But if my Savior calls me to that sweet home on high I'll live with him forever in glory by and by Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by I'll tell and sing love story there on high, there with my rear redeemer, no more to die. Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I want to be of service along this pilgrim way and lead the lost to Jesus as fervently I pray. As day by day I travel, I'll keep him ever nigh and live with him forever in glory by and by. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I'll tell and sing the story there on high. There with my dear Redeemer, no more to die. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory by and the end I know is nearing, by faith I look away To yonder home supernal, the land of endless day I'll cling to him forever, 
and look beyond the sky in glory by and by oh yes i'll live in glory by and by i'll tell and sing love story there on high there with my dear redeemer no more to die oh yes i'll live in glory by and by oh yes i'll live in glory by and by bow with me please tell me father thank you for this day you've given to us come together to worship you study your word sing praises to you we thank you for all the many other blessings that you've given to us Thank for Rick and the lesson he brought us this morning. Help us take it and put it use in our lives that we, not, we might be better servants for you. Lord, we ask your blessing on our sick. We ask that they could be returned to their much wanted health. Lord, we give thanks to you for those recovered or recovering from their illnesses. Lord, we ask you to be with the, the, our elders, our deacons, guide them in the decisions or responsibilities that they have. Lord, we thank you for those in the prison ministry. Give them the wisdom and knowledge they need. Lord, we ask you to guide us in everything we do. Guide us as we leave here today. Protect us. Give us our sins. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. <laughs>